OK, so here we go. So uh, 10.2, number six. All right, so it says, in a common but dangerous prank, uh, a chair is pulled away as a person is moving downward to sit on it, causing the victim to land on the hard floor. All right, so it says, suppose the victim falls by 0.5 meters. Um, so their vertical displacement is going to be uh, negative 0 0.5 meters. Uh, again, we're going to assume that they began at rest before sitting, despite the awkward wording of the problem. Um, and it says uh, their mass is 70 kilograms. Uh, and the collision on the floor lasts 0 0.82 seconds. So you've got to be careful here, you guys. There's two separate time intervals, right? There's the time interval during which the dude is falling. And there's a time interval during which he's stopping, right? OK? So I'm thinking about it in these terms. There's the velocity at the top is 0. The velocity right before he hits the ground is something. And then he hits the ground, and the velocity goes back to 0, right? Yeah. Clear? So this displacement here is the displacement for that chunk. And the time that's given is the time for this chunk. What is it, 0 0.082? So does all of that make sense? OK, so um, thoughts about how to get started, you guys? Find the velocity that the person has right before they hit the ground, right? OK, so probably want to use this guy. Oh, let's do it in red since it corresponds to that red time interval. So 2a delta x equals vf squared minus vi squared, right? So 2 times negative 9.8 times negative 0 0.5 equals vf squared minus 0. So whatever the square root of 9.8 is, right? 9.8 square rooty. Oh, stupid calculator. 3.13. All right, is everybody good with that? Yes. OK, so now what the problem wants us to do is find the average force acting on the victim from the floor during the collision. OK, so first of all, something I, that I think didn't, I maybe did not make clear when we went through the notes for this section is the following, that when you do, how do I want to say this? I think the way that I uh, explained this to you, I said, OK, you can use your change in momentum equals net force times time as long as the force is constant, right? And I said, if it's not constant, then you have to integrate your force with respect to the time, right? Everybody up, up the board, up to the speed there? All right. It turns out that this basically accomplishes finding your average force. So you can also do this. And I think I did not do a good job making that clear when we went through the notes. Cool? OK. So um, during the collision, here's what we know. We know that our initial velocity is negative 3.13 meters a second. We know our final velocity is 0. We know that the time that this change takes place over is 0.082 seconds. And we know that our mass is 70 kilograms. All right, so you could absolutely solve this just by finding acceleration, multiplying by mass to get net force, and solving it that way, which I think if I wasn't doing a problem on, you know, if we weren't in the middle of a chapter on momentum, that's what I would do. But let's do it this way. So let's find our change in momentum by doing mass times change in velocity. Follow? So the mass is 70 kilograms. We know our change in velocity, so multiply that out, and you're going to get what? Negative. No, it's actually going to be positive, isn't it? Where did I put it? Oh, is it just 70 times 3.13? Yes, which. 219.13. Thank you. 219.13, thank you. Okay, so is everybody okay with that? All right, so what's our next step? <laughs> We're trying to find the force that the floor exerts on the dude's butt. So we can find that force now, right? OK. So here's what it, where I'm guessing people ran into problems is this. So now we're going to go, all right, well, change in momentum is net force times time. I know my change in momentum is the 
kilogram meters a second. That's equal to our net force times our time. All right? So let's see. Times 70 divided by 0.082. And it gives you a net force of 2672 newtons, which isn't the answer on the sheet, right? So is that everybody got there and they're like, well, I don't know what I did wrong, right? That's the net force. That's not what the question asks us for. The question asks us for the force from the floor on his butt. So think about what forces are acting on him. Here's my dude. So what forces are on him? Well, gravity is pulling him down with a force of negative 686 newtons, right? 70 times 9.8. And there's the force from the floor pushing up on him. Those two need to add up to this. So we're going to have, uh, where do I want to write this? Force of floor minus 686 has got to equal 2672. And that's all that. Right. Cool? All right, so please, 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 please be super aware of that, that when you use this impulse equation, it's net force, which means that this, once again, I was sloppy on, I keep forgetting to write my net there. Okay, and I remember we kept going back and fixing that when we did the notes too. So remember, it's net force. Cool? All right, there is another problem where this shows up, um, the elevator one. So same thing actually ends up happening there. Um, when you use your change in momentum to find the average force on the, from the floor on the passenger, technically I'm guessing what most of you did was you found the net force. Why does it not matter in that one? Do you have any idea? So like in 7B, the force from the floor turns out to be, uh, what is that, 470,000 newtons? You got an idea? Uh, yeah, because of sig figs. Yeah, so when you're looking at, why can I not scoot this over? It's, sorry, so it's 47,000 newtons. So imagine 47,000 newtons, how much of a roll is another 600 newtons going to make? Right, so it's insignificant. Okay, but technically speaking, when you did number seven, same thing. You should have had to add on your force of gravity. It ends up being insignificant. Though. Cool. All right. Any problems with six? All right. Very good. Let's do number. Five.